So, so far we've uh, discussed uh, the DFT, the discrete Fourier transform. We've understood uh, why it's important and uh, we've understood how to calculate it uh, using one method. Um, we also did a few examples to calculate the DFT using that method. And uh, finally, we looked at uh, the circular convolution and uh, how you can compute it manually as well as how you can uh, use FFT um, to just um, to compute it easily, right? So finally, we look at uh, uh, at a concept called the fast Fourier transform, like I said before, um, and in the first in the first video. Okay, and uh, to understand why uh, a method like this is required, let's just uh, go back uh, to the FFT uh, the, the DFT's uh, formula. So if we have as the uh, DFT x of k, this is equal to um, uh, summation from n equal to zero to n minus one x of n, okay, and uh, cos of two pi k n over n minus j sine two pi k n over n if you're on if you're wondering what i did over here um my original uh, formula had summation of something with e raised to something okay i've taken that e raised to something use euler's relation and just expanded it okay so that's what i've done and uh, we can go further we can uh, convert this x of n uh, into its uh, real and imaginary parts and then multiply it and we can do all of that so if if you if you do the math uh, it turns out that all of this requires uh, 4n squared, where n is the same capital N. It requires 4n squared trigonometric com computations, okay? And it requires uh, 2n squared multiplications. And finally, uh, 4n into n minus 1 additions, okay? So, for a number like uh, this, okay, uh, let's just take an example. Our typical sequences may have, you know, something like 1024 points, okay? And the value of n squared in such cases, you know, 1024 squared, you know, n squared is this much, okay? It's a huge number, okay? So it comes out to be 1048576, uh, okay? This is a pretty big number, okay? And uh, it makes no sense to have a computer to uh, do so much of multiplication again and again and again. So, um, so we need a more efficient algorithm, okay? and uh, we have the fft okay and what and the concept behind the fft is the same concept uh, kings used uh, if if you remember history if you remember history class uh, kings used something called as divide and conquer they came to a country um, they divided the people and then they managed to conquer them so we're going to just learn from history and uh, divide and conquer our signal okay our uh, our discrete time signal so what we do is we take a signal okay we take a sequence. I'm going to take 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm taking these numbers because I know, already know the DFT of 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm too lazy to uh, look at another sequence. Anyway, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. What I do is I divide this into two halves. Okay. I conquer each of these halves. So I find the DFT of each of these halves. And then I find the DFT again. So what I do is I take these two halves. I write them as two separate rows of a matrix okay this is my big matrix okay and i do one two three four again okay and uh, next what i do is i find the dft of each of these rows okay and if you remember uh, the dft was um let me just get out octave because i have the dft there it is 10 okay it is then the next term is minus 2 plus 2j Okay, um, that's not very clear. Minus 2 plus 2j. My third term is minus 2. And I have minus 2 minus 2j. Okay. Again, I have the same terms down below because it's the same sequence. So I'm just going to write it down quickly. Minus 2 and minus 2 minus 2j. So what you can see, I have calculated the DFT of each of these. Next, what I do is I calculate the DFT of a column at a time so what do i get i get okay i get 20 so the dft of 10 comma 10 is 20 comma 0 okay the dft of minus 2 plus 2j minus 2 plus 2j is minus 4 plus 4j comma 0 j comma 0 
uh, DFT of minus 2 and minus 2 is minus 4 comma 0 okay, so it's the double and then the DFT of these is of the same term again is the double again so I have minus 4 minus 4 J and 0 and then I write down the numbers in this sequence okay what that means is my final x of k okay my final x of k is 20 0 minus 4 plus 4 j 0 minus 4 0 minus 4 minus 4 j and then finally 0 so what do I do again I calculated the 4 point uh, dft over here the 4 point dft over here got the results and then I calculated the 2 point dft of each of these and I got my final 8 point dft of my 8 point input sequence so that's what we did we did divide and conquer and let's actually see if this divide and conquer helped us out or not okay and i'm just going to do a comparison here okay between the two approaches so remember we have an 8 point dft okay so again we have these 4n square trigonometric calculations we have 2n square multiplications and we have 4n into n minus 1 is that right let me check my notes here give me a minute yeah it's 4n into n minus 1 uh, additions okay 4n into n minus 1 additions so what i'm going to do is make a table um, not a good line make a table Okay, this should be good enough. And first, let's find out what the numbers are for eight. Okay, so because we originally wanted to calculate the eight point DFT, so eight square is uh, sixty-four. Sixty-four into four is two fifty-six. Okay, again eight square is sixty-four. Sixty-four two in, into two is one twenty-eight. Okay, and then I have eight into seven is uh, fifty-six. Fifty-six point four is uh, four twenty to twenty-four. Okay, so that's my that's my uh, those are my numbers there what we did in the divide and conquer is we first calculate the four point dft we calculated it twice um yeah so i have four square is 16 16 times 4 is 64 okay uh, i have again four times four square is 16 16 times 2 is 32 okay uh four threes are 12 fours are 48 okay i have to multiply these by two so i had i had two um uh, four points I'm just going to do the same thing here okay so I have that multiplied by two I have to multiply this by two because I had two rows so I have 128 here I have 64 here and I have uh, 48 twos are uh, 96 no, um, is that right yes it's right okay 96 okay and then I had a two point DFT so this is multiplied by two by the way okay then I had these two point DFTs uh, two square is four four fours are 16 okay uh, 2 square is 4 again, 4 twos are 8, uh, 2 into 1 is 2, 2, two fours are 8 again, okay, am I right there, yes I am right there, okay, and then I have to multiply this by 4 because I calculated this 4 times, okay, so this is uh, 16 fours are 64, right, um, uh, 4 eights are 32, and 4 eights are 32, okay, so that's, that's my calculation, now I have to add up this column and this column, so 64, plus 128 is 2, 1 carry, 9, 192, okay, 32 plus 64 is a 96, and 32 plus 96 is a 3, 128, okay, so these are my numbers, you can clearly see that, you know, 256 is much greater than 192, uh, 128 is greater than 196, and 224 is also pretty much greater than 128 so you can see that a divide and conquer approach actually helped it helped uh, reduce things significantly and if you look at uh, if you actually look at it in you know when you actually increase the number increase the number of points it it you know it helps it, it helps even more okay and what we're going to do is we're going to use this approach in actually um, calc in we're going to use this approach um, in actually forming our uh, fast Fourier transform okay so let's get into that next okay so what what did we learn so far uh, dividing uh, a sequence okay and into smaller bits calculating the dft of each of these smaller bits actually reduces the number of computations so what i'm going to discuss now is called uh, the radix 2 the radix 2 uh, decimation 
in time fast Fourier transform okay FFT there is also radix uh, 4 you can have any radix you want and you can also have something called a decimation in frequency I'm going to dis discuss decimation in time because you know the it has lesser of well, uh, I need to write less in that case and I, I'm also more familiar with that method okay so what we do is we break down our entire signal into pairs pairs of numbers okay so a necessary condition for this is that the length of the sequence be 2 power n and if the sequence is not 2 power n we can just append zeros to it so that it becomes 2 power n okay so uh, my the length of my sequence can either be 2, 4, uh, 8, 16, 32 any of those numbers so I'm going to take my original 8 point sequence that is 1, 2, 3, 4 1, 2, 3, 4 right those are my numbers okay so like I said I take pairs of them uh, I'll tell you which pairs to take shortly what I do is suppose I have two numbers a and b okay and the operation I need to perform on these numbers for the fast Fourier transform is given by something called as the butterfly diagram okay so I have something called as a I'm just going to draw this first for you and then explain it okay okay this is a minus one this is w sub n raised to r okay all right so what do we get here what this means is I have this a you can see this line over here so this a goes all the way till the end over here okay and becomes an a okay similarly this b comes out all the way goes gets multiplied by this w sub n raised to r and it comes here and becomes plus w sub n raised to r times b okay and then what color should I pick let me try uh, green is done let's try orange okay so um, again I take this a I follow this line here and I come here and I get an a again right I take this b it gets multiplied by w sub n raised to r it also gets multiplied by minus 1 okay so I get minus w sub n raised to r times b so this is called the butterfly diagram okay apparently this is supposed to look like a butterfly okay it's never looked like a butterfly to me yet but it's called the butterfly diagram okay and uh, we have we get this a plus uh, w sub n raised to r times b and a minus w sub n raised to r um, times b okay um, how do we get this w sub n raised to r um, we actually need to get into the derivation behind the fast Fourier transform which I'm not going to do here um, there's also a general derivation behind the divide and conquer approach okay, and as to why it works and uh, it requires splitting up the sequence into smaller chunks and all of that um, I'm not going to go into all those details it cover it takes a lot of pages to do that but just for now understand that this is the diagram you need to know you have a w sub n raised to r you have a minus one here and uh, these are these are the operations you need to do if you're interested you could actually look at any uh, signal processing textbook okay any uh, I'm using um, like I said digital signal processing by uh, John Proakis and uh, Dimritis uh, Manulakis okay so you can you can use uh, that book or uh, uh, any book you like okay so this is my textbook back in college anyway so this is this is the basic butterfly diagram okay before I divert too much let's just directly get into the algorithm okay what I first do is I need to rearrange these terms and I need to rearrange these terms in something called as a bit reversed order okay you know that this is the zero term this is the first term second term all the way up to the seventh term okay so this is uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this down in binary okay so I have the zero term which is zero 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 I have the first term the second term the third term the fourth term the fifth term the sixth term and the seventh term so this is x of zero x of one x of 2, x of 3, x of 4, x of 5, x of 6 and x of 7 okay so these are my terms what I do is I reverse the order of bits okay so this remains uh, as it is 0 0 0 this becomes 1 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 okay 1 0 1 0 0 sorry 0 1 1 and 111 so you can see I've actually taken these bits and just reverse them now what I do is I arrange um, 
the input my input signal according to this one's ascending order so i look at i look at this i will look at this okay and i arrange it in ascending order of this okay so my first term is as usual x of 0 okay my second term is this 0 0 1 which actually is x of 4 so this is my second term in the order okay and uh, next one is 0 1 1 which is actually x of 6 okay I write there actually no it's 0 1 0 my fault next term is so it's 0 next is 0 okay so I'll just strike off what I'm done with so this is 0 I'm done with 0 0 1 next one is 0 1 0 which is x of 2 so this should be x of 2 okay next is 3 so that is 0 1 1 which which is actually x of 6 okay next I need uh, 1 0 0 which is x of 1 am I right there yes I am okay and then after 1 0 0 gives so 1 0 1 which is x of 5 okay and then we have x of 3 and finally x of 7 okay so this is my order and this is the order in which I need to um, I need to actually uh, arrange my input okay and as I said this is the radix 2 decimation in time it's called decimation in time because I've taken the times uh, I've taken the signal in the time domain um, divided it into chunks, chunks I've actually separated them mixed them together okay next what I do is since it's radix 2 I pair I pair things together so I will pair um, 0 and 4 together initially um, I will pair 0 and 4 together I will pair 2 and 6 together I will pair 1 and 5 together and I will pair 3 and 7 together okay so that's how that's how we're going to go about the entire procedure okay and you can see we have actually followed the divide and conquer approach we have divided our big huge 8 uh, 8 point sequence into just two points okay so let me just write that down neatly to the extreme right corner because I will need as much space as I can get. So okay, let me switch back to paintbrush from the select tool. Okay, so I have x of 0. Um, that's coupled with x of 4. Okay, I have x of 2 coupled with x of 6. I have x of 1 coupled with x of 5 and finally x of 3 coupled with x of 7 okay okay next i will just draw the butterfly diagram the two point butterfly diagram which i just showed you all right and this would be w sub 8 okay it would be w sub 8 raised to 0 anything raised to 0 is 1 so i'm going to leave it as it is okay S the same diagram applies to all of them in the first stage this is called the stage one of the FFT okay minus one and this is a minus one okay all right so next what I'm going to do is just do the two point uh, DFT so let's just write down our ori original sequence I'm going to rub off this x of zero x of four turns I'm actually going to write down the original this the original signal of which I wanted to find the Fourier transform okay which was one two three four one two three four so okay so that would be one two three four right and one uh, two and this should be a three am I right yes and four okay Ah, okay, so you have one, one, three, three, two, two, four, four. Okay, great. Um, that's my original original sequence, and we're going to find the two point f f t in this case. So what we do is, um, this is one. This is as I said, a plus b, and this will be a minus b, right? A plus b is one plus one, that is two. A minus b is zero. This is three plus three, six, zero. Two plus two is four, zero, and finally I have eight and zero. Okay, very simple. First step is simple. Okay. In the next step, what I do is I take this point, okay, and I take this point if I am right. Yes, I am right. Yeah, I will take this point and I will do the same thing, okay. And this will be w8 w sub 8 raised to 0 again, so I don't have to do anything here. This will be minus 1, so I get 2 plus. Uh, we'll do that later. Then I pick another color, okay, 
I will use this point. Okay, it gets very confusing unless you actually do it yourself. And I'm going to extend this a little bit, and I will do this for over here. Okay, so this is a minus one again, and this is W sub eight raised to two. All right, so if I actually have to do an example, I have an example. Anyway, let's actually calculate what is W sub eight raised to two uh, shortly. Okay. So this should be w sub 8 raised to 2 okay all right so that's what we do and uh, let's just do the first term so the first term is quite simple okay i get 2 plus 6 which is 8 and i get 2 minus 6 which is minus 4 okay for the next term i need to calculate what this w sub 8 raised to 2 so what is w sub 8 this is e power minus j 2 pi by 8 Times ah uh, two, right? So this is two twos are four, so I get pi by two. So cos of pi by two is this. Sine ninety is one, right? So I get a minus j. So this is a minus j. So let me just erase that out. So w sub eight, uh, w sub eight uh, raised to two is a minus j. Okay, And this is a minus j. Okay, that's what we get here. So what is this? This is six uh, minus j. Zero minus six j, so this gives me minus six j, okay, and this is gives gives me a plus six j, okay. Those are my terms. I will do the same thing for the bottom half. So I get this, and take this, okay, and I get four plus eight, which is ah uh, twelve, right? And I get four minus eight, which is minus four, okay. And similarly, I will take these two terms. Okay, put a minus one here. This should have been a minus one here, and this is a minus j here. Okay, and uh, and I have both terms zero. I have done something wrong here. This should have been a zero, right? Ah, uh, I made a mistake here. Okay, let me just fix that. This is actually a zero. Okay, my fault there. Okay, so mm, this is actually a zero again, and this is also a zero. So it's eight zero minus four zero twelve. Okay. So again, we have zero. So we just have zero here and a zero here. Okay. Sorry about that mix-up. So I have eight zero zero. Sorry, I have eight zero minus four zero twelve zero minus four zero. Okay. So that's my that's my next term. I have one final step to go for, and uh, what I do in this case is I take this term. So let me just make some space for me. Um, I'm just going to take this entire thing. I'm going to move it to the left a little bit as much as I can. I'm going to remove this from here, and that should give me about enough space for you. Okay, so I take this eight. Okay, and I take one, two, three, four, and I take this twelve, and I add them. Okay, and this gives a minus one. This is W sub eight raised to zero. Okay. I take this term. I take this term, and do the same thing. Okay, this is a minus one, but this is a W sub eight raised to one. Okay, I take yellow. I have this minus four here. I hope it's visible. I have this minus four here. I do this and I do this. I have a W sub eight raised to two, which is minus j. We already know it's minus j, so I'm going to just write it down there. Okay, and finally, what color should I pick? Let me pick red. Okay, a good old red. And that's the last one. Okay, and okay. I know the crosses mix up a little bit, but uh, I, I'm sure this is what matters: the minus j here, minus one here, and the w sub eight raised to three. So let's just quickly calculate what these numbers are. Um, so w sub eight, uh, w sub eight raised to zero is just one. Okay, we don't need not worry about it. W sub eight raised to one. So I'm just going to calculate this in octave. So we have e raised to two star pi star um, j, sorry, i star. Um, one divided by eight. What do I get? 
I get root 2 plus root 2 i so 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2 i okay so what what you get here is w sub 8 is actually you rub that out okay w sub 8 so I have to pick green there this is 1 over root 2 okay uh, plus j times 1 over root 2 okay and uh, finally the same thing um, raised to 3 probably a similar thing with just one negative sign there right i'm right okay so w sub 8 raised to 3 is actually minus sorry is minus uh, 1 by root 2 plus j times 1 by root 2 okay so it's the same thing with the minus sign stuck before it before before the real term so let's, let me just write that down for you that's what i have to multiply this with so i have minus 1 by root 2 plus j times 1 by root 2 here okay okay let's calculate our dft now i have let's go along the blue lines so i have this blue line here okay and this over here so i have 8 plus 12 which is 20 okay and i have 8 minus 12 which is minus 4 okay great I have a 0 plus 0 which gives me a 0 and a 0 minus 0 gives me a 0 again not interesting all right next I have a minus 4 uh, minus 4 j oh sorry it's, uh, it's a minus 4 okay and this is a minus 4 multiplied by minus j if you look here this is my minus 4 I'm multiplying it by minus four, minus j so it gives me plus 4j so you have a plus 4j here but over here I'll have a minus 4 minus 4j okay and finally I have a 0 here I have a 0 here so I need not worry I don't even have to bother about the 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 terms I can just blindly write 0 here and this if you remember is exactly the same result I got before it's 2 20 0 minus 4 plus 4j 0 minus 4 0 minus 4 minus 4 j and then 0 so that's that's the fast Fourier transform it may look a little complicated but uh, with a little bit of practice it actually becomes easy uh, i don't really want to stress on the butterfly diagram i just uh, did all this um, to tell you how things work okay there's a lot more you need to know next what i'm going to do is i'm just going to quickly take two minutes and get into matlab okay so into octave so let me just reduce the size of the screen so it fits my recording window okay great you can already see I've done a bit over here so I'm going to clear the screen uh, okay so what do we do in octave suppose I have a sequence like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay and also I'll okay so this is my input sequ sequence finding the FFT or the DFT rather using the FFT algorithm is extremely simple I just say x is equal to FFT on capital X equal to FFT of x okay and that's it I get the FFT very simple if I have to find the inverse FFT as in if I want to get back my signal so I say y is equal to i FFT of capital X and I get my original sequence my, this uh, answer will have these i terms because of rounding off errors you can see this is a 0 i which is actually 0 so my first term is 1 my second term is actually 2 my third term is 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay and which is my actual input sequence so that's how you find uh, the FFT uh, rather the discrete Fourier transform and the inverse uh, Fourier transform in octave okay so I have covered both in uh, this video and uh, as an exercise I would like to uh, like I would like you to uh, see how uh, the DFT is related to the discrete time Fourier series if you're able to figure that out you can use the same Fourier transform function to find uh, the discrete time Fourier sequence of a periodic signal in the discrete in, in the discrete uh, time case okay so find out the relation between the DFT okay so I'm going to write down write that down here find out the relation between the D DFT okay versus the uh, discrete time Fourier series okay so this applies to periodic uh, discrete time sequences okay and this refers to a periodic uh, discrete time signals in fact this is the Fourier transform and you actually sample the Fourier transform so find out the relation between this once you do that you can actually find out 
um, the D DTFS using the FFT function. Okay, so I hope you like this. Uh, I know it could have. I guess it could be a little boring as well, but uh, the FFT is extremely important. Okay, uh, it's really important in uh, uh, in uh, in DSP. It's it's applied. Um, if you, if you ever buy a DSP board. Uh, you will see that it has uh, these FFT blocks, okay, and it's it's applied everywhere in signal digital signal processing, okay. So that's that's it for the fast Fourier transform.